Welcome to the Dell TIA Now studio here at Mobile World Congress 2016. This is where industry stakeholders from across the value chain delve into the transformational changes taking place in the telecommunications industry. I'm Lamor Schaffman, Director of Content Development for TIA and TIA Now, and joining me today is Joyce Mullen, Vice President and General Manager for Global OEM and IOC Solutions for Dell. Joyce, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, it's great <laughs> to be here. So tell us a little bit about what your role is at Dell. Okay. Yeah, so I am in charge of leading a terrific team of people who focus on selling technology into customers who are building something bigger, badder, better than a server or a workstation. In other words, they are writing software that solves some of the most, the world's really the most vexing problems and they need some kind of brain to run that software on and what we say is why not use Dell products and technology because you can leverage the heck out of our scale, you can leverage our global supply chain, you can leverage our global services and we have dedicated engineers who can customize the hardware for you and then we have terrific salespeople who know what it's like to introduce uh, products in the medical device business or the or the telecommunications industry. So it works out quite well. It's a great business, um, and we've gotten a lot of investment recently, and so we're growing it like crazy. And then recently we added the IoT piece, which is a whole nother kettle of fish. Yes, which is really fascinating. Yeah. So not only are you able to offer an entire ecosystem, basically, of a service offering to your clients, but you can actually, um, both in terms of the new technologies that are brought in, as well as the services and enterprise so solutions that you have to offer, but it sounds like you can offer the entire package to companies. Well, you know, you know, I think in IoT and with OEM as well, mm. you know, it, nobody can do it all themselves. Mm. So we offer terrific infrastructure capability, but when it comes to sort of putting together a true IoT solution or putting together a true OEM solution, there's a lot of participants in this ecosystem to get that done, and so our partnerships are very, very important, and you see some of those in our booth today. Right, which is really exciting. Mm. So IoT, Internet yeah. of Things, a lot of people, everyone, it's the buzzword here in everyone's mm -hmm. lips, but what does it mean to you? Yeah. So you know, IOT is really not very new. In fact, our customers in the OEM group have been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years. There's been sensors in factories and in industrial process controllers for a very long time. And so we started working hard on this a couple of years ago because we realized that because the cost of sensors were declining like crazy and the cost of cloud compute was declining like crazy, you could now instrument environments that you couldn't instrument before. So what we see, you can see some of this in our booth, we have instrumented beehives. You would have never done that before because you couldn't afford to do it. But now you can because all of those, um, all the requirements and all the capabilities around sensing and then extracting that data and taking action um, because of that data can be done for a much lower cost. And so uh, for us, it is this ecosystem of sensors and devices that are connected through a network that allow you to take action or allow action to take place without human intervention. And now Dell has been working in the OEM space for a number of years, like 20 16. years, 16 mm -hmm. years. So how is it that you actually evolved from a pure hardware play into this space? And what is the vision that you see happening for OEM and Dell in the coming years? Well, this is a huge market and growing really fast. So. The OEM space just alone is about $127 billion. So it's hard to get the data because it's not really collected like we collect server data for, you know, at IDC or Gartner or those kinds of places. And then if you add the Internet of Things on top, you start talking about trillions. So, you know, we want to be the world's best and most comprehensive technology infrastructure provider. And that's a Dell statement and it's certainly true of OEM. So what would you say is the biggest challenge that OEMs are faced and then the Dell solution that is being offered to support that? Yeah, so I mean, most of our customers, I said, are in the OEM space are software developers. They are building brilliant software that solve really tremendous problems. Things like figuring out how to cause, um, cure cancer or figuring out how to sequence a genome really fast or, or things like that. So, most of our, our customers are focused on that aspect of their business. And as I said, they need a brain to run that thing on. So, so if they can take advantage of Dell's products and solutions and Dell's technology to make sure they get their solution to market faster, 
that make sure to make sure it's more reliable, to make sure the quality is really terrific, then that's what they do. And we can help them sort of stop thinking about the hardware. We'll do that for them, and they focus on the software. The software is the most important part because the software is solving the problems. And then what can we, as a telecom industry, yep. what can we offer in order to make sure that actually you and your ecosystem can in fact be as effective as possible? Well, you know, I mean, as you think about kind of how to move all this data across the network, I mean, you, to, again, you can, you can read any analyst report you want and you'll get all kinds of different numbers, but the, in this new world of IoT, we're talking about somewhere between 20 and 50 billion devices being connected to the internet by 2020. That's a ridiculously huge number. Um, there are estimates of the amount of data that will be created by 2020 from all these devices. 44 zettabytes. What's a zettabyte? I don't know, but it has 21 zeros after the one. So <laughs> it's a whole lot of data. Lot, yeah. And you got to move a bunch of that, hopefully not all of that, across, uh, across the network. So, you know, this infrastructure is super important to the ability to figure out how to you know, pr pr uh, deliver a much more effective food supply chain, for example, or reduce the use of water, or figure out how to reduce energy consumption. Those things are all now happening because of IoT, but the, the telecommunications infrastructure is, is sort of really, really critical to making sure we do that effectively. Now, we think there are some opportunities to figure out how to be smart about how much data has to travel and how far over the network. And so some of our solutions are around making sure we provide great edge analytics capability mm -hmm. and you know the Open Fog Consortium is, is here and we're a founding member of that. That's a really important element too because you don't want to just move every single bit of data across this network. It's too, it, right. it would constrain the, bit, but the bandwidth is just not, there's nowhere near enough bandwidth for that. Well not only that, it needs to be intel intelligently done and automatically done, so right. there's going to be a certain level of artificial intelligence that needs to happen, and there are going to be so many networks interrelating with one another that somehow there's going to be, have to be prioritization of data, et cetera. Right, and I think you can do an awful lot at the edge, because if you think about a building, for example, and you're trying to automate a building, there is really no reason to transmit data that says the light is on, the light is on, the light is on. But you could transmit just the data that says there's been a change of state, and it was on, now it's off, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the data you need to do the analytics. Those are the data that are going to help you figure out how to design more effective buildings in the future or plan your space better or understand you know, how people move in the space. So you don't need to know every single thing and you don't need to transmit it all. So that notion of analytics at the edge and the white paper that the Open Fog Consortium has just published um, is all about that too. We, we have a lot of agreement in the industry that that's a really smart way to go. Mm -hmm. Cloud's really important but not everything has to go to the cloud. Right, absolutely. So recently you held a 1510 event in San Francisco. Yes. What was one of the most exciting walkaways that you had from that event? You know, um, so a very important element of IoT is considering and designing for security. And, um, and so when we had, you know, it's really a terrific collection of people that we were, we were talking about, you know, the expansion of the threat surface and, you know, it's, you're much more vulnerable um, to hacking and that kind of thing. And there were some people on the panel who actually presented an alternate view, which I thought was really terrific. Of course you have to be very careful. Of course you have to figure out how to design security into the solution and have multifaceted levels and that sort of thing. But they also said IoT can actually, actually help um, solve the security issues because if you're collecting data on usage patterns and understand kind of who should have access to the data and what's a normal behavior, most of the behavior that's normal is okay, but and you will be in a much better position to detect abnormal behavior. So there's a real sort of interesting twist on security that I learned out of that 1510. It was terrific. Fantastic, and you now, are you bringing that back into Dell's solutions and how you're thinking about Absolutely. the solutions configuring it? Absolutely, and as we think about that, how you, how you can design not only the security features to reduce the threat and, um, and to sort of make sure we're protected, but also how do you design the analytics to recognize those patterns and make sure that you're, you're sort of protecting from the inside out. Mm -hmm. That's Perfect. really terrific. So as part of your IoT ecosystem, you now have three labs, yes. three Dell labs, very yes. exciting. Yes. In Singapore, and most recently yes. with Intel, I think you went into partnership. Yes. And also in Ireland and in San Jose, I believe. Yep, Santa so, um, Santa Clara, yeah. I'm sorry. And so, tell us a little bit about those IoT labs. How do they operate? Who do you bring in? Is it entrepreneurial or entrepreneurial? Do you fund the companies? Tell us a little bit about that. 
So there's a lot of different aspects to the lab, but the, so what we what we learned is that our customers are very interested in trying to figure out how to make sure their software works and they need to test it out, and especially for small companies, they don't have money to invest in a huge amount of infrastructure. So we co-locate these next to Dell Solution Centers and then we build out infrastructure so they can use compute and storage and networking gear and run it on Dell, uh, Dell product. So that's one element of that. Um, the other thing is we show, we demonstrate a whole bunch of different use cases in the lab. So people can see and start to understand the art of the possible about what is, you know, how they can think about IoT. And then the third element is, you know, a, a li literally a workbench where they, we can mess around with cards and screwdrivers and figure out how to optimize some of the products to, to meet the needs of the customer. So, you know, it's a multifaceted, meant to be very much a working lab, and it, those, are, those are, we put those in all three regions and we're going to build many more because we don't want customers to have to travel a long way to get there. Right. And then we'll also link them all together, which will be really neat. Fantastic, I was going, I was going to ask you, what is your next lab? Do you have an idea of where your next one's going to yes. open? Yes. Can you tell us? <laughs> no. Shit, the <laughs> secret. We were looking for a secret right here. Okay, we want breaking news. Okay, you got to yeah, tell yeah. us that when it <laughs> okay, happens. Okay, okay. Um, and so now, do you invest in some of the companies that you're putting in these labs? Yeah, so, um, so it's unrelated to the labs, but we do have a fairly significant focus on entrepreneurial activity at Dell. It's kind of part of our heritage. Our yeah. founder is kind of an entrepreneur himself, exactly. right? And so we do several things. So um, one element, we have an entrepreneurial program called the Founders Club, and then we help cust we help these these companies, um, and we choose about 50 a year, and and they help uh, we help them with things like mentoring and guidance and advice and technology and you know things like that. So that's one element. We also have a venture capital organization with about, um, we put about $300 million in that recently. And those, um, we, we invest in companies who are doing work that are really, that is very important to our, our core businesses. So we choose those custom companies carefully and we do invest in some and then we don't invest in many, of course. But that's a really important element of our strategy because we learn so much from spending yeah. time with those companies and, and looking at what they're doing. Yeah. It's always energizing to spell, oh, spend it's so time much with fun. those kind of companies. Yeah, it's yeah. really fun. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were talking about use cases. Can you just give us one particularly exciting use case that you've seen coming out of these labs or in general, something that your company is working with uh, in IoT? Oh my gosh, there are so many. So we have about uh, 200 or so customers we're working on various POCs with, so that's very exciting. Um, we have, um, we, have a, we just launched a contest we call it Connect What Matters, and, and it's I think there's about 300 customers, people who are trying to win this prize money, we're doing that with Intel, we launched that um, at Dell World in October. Um, so we're learning about those. But in, in terms of specific use cases that I love, you know, there's some really, so, so we're very, very focused on the enterprise. And so we have some, lots of good use cases where we're working with companies who are, air, you know, building air conditioning units. Saijo Denki is a, a good example in Thailand. And they're, they're building air conditioning units and they put our products in those units so that they can figure out how to reduce energy consumption. And, it, and it's worked, I mean, 30% reduction. We have another one that I love, which is all about home health. And the number one reason why um, elderly patients actually have to go back to the hospital after they've been um, after they've been discharged is because they don't follow their um, medical you know regimen for taking the medicine when they're supposed to take it right. So one of our customers, HealthNet Connect, has instrumented a pill box. And so you can track when the patient takes the pill. So you know they don't. We know exactly when they take it out of the little you know Monday morning box on their in their pill box. And if they don't take it, the caregiver can or the care uh, or the uh, the physician can call and say, hey, you're supposed to you know supposed to take your take your medicine. That has reduced readmission rates by thirty percent. That's astonishing. Yeah, and we don't know exactly if they take the pill, but. Pretty soon we'll know that too. We just know they take it out of the box. But you know, there's a really practical application. And again, uh, we've seen a 30% reduction in the number of people who had to be readmitted to the hospital. Yeah. It's, it, there's some really sort of basic things like that. And then I love Chitali Dairy, where we've put RFID tags in cow's ears. It's my favorite story. Okay. And because we, the, we worked with this dairy because they wanted to figure out how to maximize milk production. And what, they f what we found is that we could track sort of the breeding of the cow, you know, the 
care, you know, the lineage. We could track kind of the vaccination schedule. Mm -hmm. We could figure out how much time they spent at uh, a feeding trough or drinking water or moving around in the day. And then once we understood kind of the correlation between behavior and you know, and milk output. And milk you output, can you can, manage, you can yes. manage the herd to sort of right. act like the perfect cow, right? It's amazing what data can do oh, it's in amazing. terms of solving problems. It's amazing. It's Fantastic. amazing. There's so many examples, and what I love about this is literally you can solve the, the most important problems in the world. Mm -hmm. There's 30% 30, 30 of, food, uh, of food that's produced is wasted, right? And if you could figure out how to get that supply chain working much more effectively, you wouldn't waste 30% yeah, of food, and actually, you could feed the world. Literally exactly, feed the world. Literally build the yeah. world. So let's talk about the great visions here and, and great intentions. If you were going to put in a sentence or two, what Dell is aiming to do over the next, let's say, 10 years with regard to IoT, what would you say? You know, um, as I said, our, our vision is to make sure that we are the most effective, most capable, absolutely best supplier of technology infrastructure, and that certainly applies to the world of IoT. Because so much more of the world can be instrumented, there's going to be so much more data and so much inf more infrastructure required, and we want to make make it possible for companies and customers to do what they didn't think was possible before. Mm -hmm. And you're right, I mean, what we, when we start out sort of with a customer, we say, okay, what are you trying to solve? What problem are you trying to solve? And they say, I want to save energy, or I want to reduce my water consumption, or whatever it is. What we find is that, that those needs evolve and they start to understand the value of the data mm -hmm. and then start thinking about new business models or how to improve the customer experience yeah. or things like that. So we want to help customers evolve their business to um, digital, you know, to go through this digital transformation that they, uh, almost every industry is going through. We want to help them do it and we think we're really well positioned to do that. Fantastic. Joyce, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. It's really fun. <laughs> and thank you for joining us here at Mobile World Congress and TIA Now. Please see our other videos at tianow.org and also join us on Twitter at TIA underscore now. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.